Hello, magandang hapon po. Welcome po sa Rappler Talk. Uh, ako po si Jay Sigutinga. I'm a reporter for Rappler. And this afternoon, we are privileged to have on the program si Vice Admiral George Ursabia Jr. He is the Commandant of the Philippine Coast Guard. Magandang hapon po, Admiral Ursabia. Good afternoon, Jesse. At uh, maraming salamat for inviting us here, sir. Salamat po sa pagpapaunlak niyo sa amin, sir. Sir, uh, unahin po natin pag-usapan yung pong kaso ng Liberty 5, Liberty 5. So, ang latest po ay uh, nag-grant po ang inyong hininging hold departure order para hindi lang po dun sa pito na akusado doon sa case na finale po ng PCG laban sa uh, carrier ship na MV Vienna Wood, kundi lahat po yung 20 na crew. So, sir, paki uh, explain po, paliwanag po sa amin, ano po yung, ad, bakit po kailangan lahat yung 20 na crew ay maho-hold departure order and saan po sila uh, i-detain, kumbaga, sir? Well, uh, so far, no, um, sa barko lang muna sila, barko nila, sila, uh, uh, they will remain on board their ship, I should say. So far, wala pa namang order na uh, it transfers to the uh, custodial facility. Um, it's just a uh, court order. Um, um, well, for them not to leave the country because of such uh, criminal charges filed against them. Okay. Sir, ang kanila pong charge ay ano po, no? uh, reckless uh, imprudence mm -hmm. resulting in damage to property and homicide. Tama po ba, sir? Multiple homicide. Uh, reckless imprudence resulting to multiple homicide and damage to property. Okay. Ano po, sir, uh, if, if ever sila po ay makakonvict dito, ano po yung magiging parusa sa kanila, sir? And sino pong pamahalaan? Saan po nila isa-serve yung kanilang magiging uh, kaparusahan if sila po ay mapat, uh, ma found guilty dito? Well, um, I cannot be a certain sa magiging uh, yung ano no, yung verdict dyan. But of course, uh, what's clear, kung uh, ma maano sila, makonvict sila dyan, of course, there's imprisonment as such. And dito yun, sir, sa Pilipinas yun kung sakali? Dito sa Pilipinas yun, of course. Okay. Uh, but dito, sir, sa although 20 yung may hold departure order, 7 crew members lang po, no? 7 officers lang po, ang mismong involved sa kaso. Yes, oo. Uh, yun lang ang uh, nakita. Nakita namin na uh, magiging uh, posibleng maging liable dito sa investigation. Ah, sa, ano, sa kaso na ito. Pero depende pa rin yan. As, uh, uh, when the case will be uh, on trial, hindi pa natin ma-certain hindi na pa rin. Hmm. Initially, yan ang nakikita namin. So it's possible, sir, that uh, of the 20, so 13 sila na detained or naka-hold departure order sila, they're not part of the case, pwede po silang ma-summon as witness. Ganun po ba yun? Admiral? Yes, that's true. Yes. Um, Admiral, um, of course, when the first when the reports first came out, uh, it was reported that the vessel was Chinese. And of course, I'm sure you're very much aware na medyo may trauma po ang mga Pilipino when it comes to an experience, an encounter like this with a Chinese vessel dahil po dun sa nangyari sa FB Jemver noon pong nakaraang taon kung saan uh, suspected Chinese militia vessel yung bumangga sa kanila. Dito po sa kasong ito, sir, sinabi niyo po uh, na nag agree kayo na uh, in, your, in your estimation of the events, it seems like it was an accident. But sir, did it matter, yes. Admiral? Did it matter that it was a Hong Kong vessel, which means it is still a Chinese vessel, uh, and that there, yung reaction ng public was at first um, was to be wary of the kung siya ba yung accidental or kung sinaja. Uh, kwento niyo po sa amin, sir, yung mga naging pagkakaiba sa nangyari sa Jember. Ano po yung basa niyo sa uh, naging incident na ito? Hello, Jesse. Ano? Um, yes, uh, we are treating this uh, maritime accident as an accident per se. Malaking pagkakaiba nito kumpara doon sa Jember. Una, itong uh, nangyari sa itong pollution na ito, eh nangyari sa loob ng 
system uh, uh, maritime water standing wherein we have full jurisdiction as internal water standing ito. Unlike yung sa Jember kasi, nasa contestable area kasi nangyari. So talagang dalawang malaking pagkakalipa. Uh, pangalawa, itong uh, pollution uh, incident na ito, eh pareho naman yung nagbanggaan participating vessels. Uh, ibig sabihin, pareho sila na navigate in, uh, in a designated sea lane. Okay? Which is off uh, uh, Occidental Mindoro. Well, yung gender naman, eh naka-anchor yun. At uh, dun sa, well, uh, contested, contestable area. At, um, well, on fishing, naka-anchor. Tapos tinamaan siya sa isang maneuvering na uh, Chinese vessel. So, yan ang dalawang magkakaiba no? uh, ng kita namin. So with that, uh, we are treating this collision incident as a mere accident of a merchant vessel and a fishing vessel, uh, both navigating, uh, authorized to navigate in a designated sea lane, which is inside our uh, internal waters, which is uh, wherein we have full jurisdiction over such area. Thus, our domestic law. Uh, applies to the people. Um, Admiral, in your investigation, uh, nasabi na po, naibalita na po natin that uh, the finding was that all the safety and emergency mechanisms of the Vienna Wood vessel were in order. In other words, uh, umaandar naman yung kanilang radar, meron sila ng mga proper lighting, uh, and then merong crew on board. Kumbaga, hindi naman naka-autopilot at the time si MV Vienna Wood. Uh, are there any new findings, sir, that could explain kung paano sila nagkabanggaan? And also, sa part naman po ng Liberty 5, lumubog na po siya, so hindi na po matitignan yung vessel, pero uh, meron pong pitong mas maliliit na vessels na nasa vicinity na naging saksi dun sa nangyari. So, meron po ba tayo ngayong mas malinaw na picture kung ano po yung naging cause kung bakit po sila nagbungguan? Totoo yan, Jesse, but unfortunately, we are prevented by court to reveal our findings now. Kaya I cannot really uh, give all the details. Pero what you have said, yes, so we found out that uh, Vienna Wood is completely safety uh, requirements. No? So, compliant naman yung bato. So, with such, uh, with such uh, findings, um, talagang ma-attribute namin possibly talagang human error. So, hanggang dyan lang ang um, pwede namin verify. Right. Kasi kailangan, uh, we have such, uh, there's such an order for, for us not to repeat this in public. Sir, uh, Admiral, mahigit isang linggo pong nag-active search and rescue ang Philippine Coast Guard, ang Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary, kasama rin po ang Navy, ah, sorry, ang Air Force, ang Bureau of Fire Protection, uh, BNP Maritime Group, pati local government disaster response units sa may Occidental Mindoro. And yet, hindi po tayo nakakita ng kahit isang trace nung... Uh, Nung, uh, mga, yung 14 no, na katao na were on board the Liberty, Liberty Cinco when it happened. Um, ano po ba yung nakita ng divers? Natagpuan po ba nila kung saan lumubog yung barko? Ano po yung teorya natin kung bakit po hindi natin sila nakikita hanggang ngayon? Well, uh, what's certain kasi, Jesse, nabutan pa kasi ng responding uh, uh, SAR units natin. Yung uh, barko Katao uh, pero submerged land, slowly sinking. So identified talaga yung area kung saan siya dito. At uh, there was an attempt on the part of our uh, skilled divers to make a survey sana. But when they saw that uh, the top-sized fishing vessel was already sinking, they, 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 they observed uh, safe distance from it kasi pag lumubog kasi yan there is a possibility na pati sila pag malapit sila 
magkakaroon uh, ng suction effect for the stingy yes. squid. But mm -hmm. they were not able to do such a survey underwater, which was the intention of the time. Because the vessel, as I said, was in uh, was uh, at the brink of sinking, which yes. really happened. No? Kung lumubog, puluyan na siya lumubog. Kaya hindi na consummate yung uh, survey na supposedly dado na time. So, wala sila, sila nagkita talaga na body or whatsoever uh, that would indicate na may mga tao doon na na-trap or whatsoever. As to the theory, Yes, we can have such theory na possibly nga na-trap sila doon sa loob. Okay, kasi nung nangyari kasi yung banggaan na yun, Jesse, it was, uh, so to, uh, it was an unholy hour, so to speak. So, so parang pag-midnight na eh. So, usually, uh, natutulog na mga tao niya. Uh, ang gising lang yan, eh yung in-charge sa pag na So, ano, yung uh, uh, duty on watch, okay, and the rest would be sleeping already in some uh, patina nila. So most likely, nung tinamaan sila, nag-capsize diretso, hindi na siguro na nakayanan lumabas. Okay, and I learned that there was a net, a net on board, fishing net on board, na uh, daladala nila, uh, siguro from the fishing ground, this is a big net you know, uh, for per sign. Dala dala nila siguro para ayusin, maka damage net ito. So possibly then, nung magkapsize, nahulog itong net, nag-open. And of course, when the net will open, it will, uh, it, there's a possibility na matatrap sila doon. So if ever they were able to get out from their cabins, no? And that net would be a, 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 a trap, possibly then. Right. These are just theories. Yes, sir. These are just theories. Yes, Admiral. Uh, theories, uh, okay. Yes. Thank you, Admiral. Um, nung pong una niyong kinuwento sa amin yung sequence of events, uh, nalaman po natin na uh, yung distress call galing sa MV Vienna Wood ay natanggap ng uh, PCG Command Center uh, almost more than two hours since the event, two, three hours after the event. Isa po siyang email. And sabi niyo po, those first three hours would have been crucial. Uh, may findings na po ba tayo kung bakit naging ganun yung delay? Pasado alas gis nangyari yung banggaan. Pero lagpas alauna ng makarating ang distress call sa Philippine Coast Guard Command Center. Meron na. Meron na tayong findings to. Uh, pero hindi natin pwede nga i-review dito because that is very vital dun sa case na tinayin natin. Understood, sir. Uh, Admiral, may sinabi po kayo na isa sa mga tinitignan ng Coast Guard in the pipeline is to improve our mechanisms for these distress calls. So to the extent po na pwede niyong ikwento sa amin na hindi maapektuhan ang takbo ng kaso, ano po yung mga bagay na kailangan ng improvement sa distress call mechanism uh, ng Philippine Coast Guard, Admiral? Well, uh, isa talaga sa na-recommend namin doon uh, na itong mga fishing vessels should also be equipped with AIS. No? Kasi lahat ng mga merchant vessels kasi, katulad ng BNW, uh, are equipped with uh, AIS. Kaya natatrap namin yung nila, yung, uh, yung uh, track nila na monitor namin no? because of the AIS. Unfortunately, ang mga fishing vessels kasi are not required to be equipped of such uh, equipment on board. If only they, uh, this, uh, this uh, be, uh, fishing vessel was equipped with such, we could have trapped it down and uh, forewarn such vessel. Uh, you are on collision course with, uh, with that uh, bulk carrier. So, hindi namin siya na monitor from from our position, only the Vienna would monitor that. So there is really a need to upgrade also uh, such uh, safety requirements for a fishing vessel. Because right now they're not required. So the fishing vessel is considered compliant. You know? 
we don't not AIS because it's not requirement for them. Right. And uh, okay, okay, that's one. Number two, because the Occidental Mindoro is a sea lane, there's a need for us also to put up a radar radar station there so that we can monitor movements of uh, ships transiting the area so that we can assist them to observe safe uh, distance and advise them if they are uh, on collision course with participating vessels there well, with the use of that radar, radar system. So, kailangan na natin talaga mag-level up, so to speak, in uh, really managing and regulating our designated sea lanes in the country. Especially so, the Philippines is an archipelago. So, marami tayong mga sea lanes. So, that is really a need for us to really uh, monitor the sea lanes to prevent uh, such kind of uh, accident. Not to mention, uh, we have to really upgrade also our um, you know, distress signal monitoring. Kasi, uh, yung ibang bansa kasi may tinatawag na GMDSS no, system. It's a system in monitoring uh, distress calls from ships. No? Unfortunately, tayo, we, we were supposed to have ours, but it ended up as a white elephant project. So, it did not go away. So, sayang nga yun. If only that project uh, was a successful one, sana meron na tayong ganyang klaseng sistema uh, in the Philippines where if a ship is in distress and they will activate their, their GMDSS system, through such system, we'll be able to receive such distress call from them. Kung meron sana tayo, eh, we don't have such eh, na hindi na tuloy. Admiral, kailan po ito dapat? Kailan siya na-calendar, na kumbaga? And bakit po ito nabin-bin? Uh, meron po bang pag-asa na mabuhay itong project about the GMTSS anytime soon? Well, um, I'm not, not sure. No, kung anong taon, parang 1998 ata, 1997. Ang matagal na, Admiral. Matagal, matagal na. na, oo. oo. Uh, parang si... Secretary Lichao ko pa yung ano, PLTC pa na yun. At um, hindi po ito na-prioritize all this time, Admiral? Hindi eh. Hindi. Um, hindi ito nag-prosper. It was implemented. In fact, meron tayong mga structures nito in uh, um, various areas in the country from north to south. Uh, hindi na-kompleto. It was never completed. More so, it it, it, it that become uh, functional, again white elephant project. So it mm. was a, if I remember it right, it was a French uh, funded uh, 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 project. Okay. Mm. This is a GMDSS project. And what, Sayang, would it, what would it take, Admiral, to revive this? Because obviously it's necessary. Uh, evidence is the collision between the two vessels recently. Uh, is this something you will push for, Admiral? Uh, what what help yes. would you need? Yes, but uh, we will go back to square one on this. Because nawala na talaga tong project na ito. Eh. So we have to go back to square one. So we really need such kind of system. And there's a more modern system of such other uh, mm. present uh, time. So we will push for that. Uh, okay. So radar system, then uh, yung uh, ito, distress uh, distress calling system okay naman ma we, we should have such capability rightly uh, so admiral for us to, para we can get the distress call on a very timely uh, manner right uh, zoom out tayo kaunti admiral um, there are vessels b besides the need for um, these monitoring systems, the Coast Guard is on a project to acquire more vessels. Recently, we received uh, and we've commissioned the BRP Gabriela Silang, so far our most modern patrol vessel. But recently, also, the si Secretary Togade of the Department of Transportation signed a, uh, a contract for two new 
uh, large vessels, tama po ba, sir? Uh, uh, multi-role response vessels that will be from Mitsubishi in Japan. So please tell us about this, Admiral. These are actually offshore patrol vessels, uh, Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, we have one. Gabriela Sila is an offshore patrol vessel type. And um, we are into getting two more. And that's what you have mentioned. This is uh, in Japan, from Japan. So we're expecting two more of which by 2020. It's all, it is also an offshore patrol vessel. Well, uh, Gabriela Sila is 83 meters long. The one that we are getting from Japan is 92 meters long. It's longer mm. than the Gabriela Sila. Japan made lang. Mm. Japan made yon. But the Gabriela Sila is from France. Yes. Now, uh, we are also trying to have a repeat order of this Gabriela Sila type of offshore patrol vessel. Two more of which. Mm. Okay, so we want to increase the number of offshore patrol vessel of ours. Because the purpose of which is for us to be able to conduct sustained patrols in uh, well, um, where in West Philippine Sea and Bajo uh, di Masilok and Benham Rise. Uh, ito yung mga well patrolling our EEZ. So yes. To speak. Okay, we need bigger ships because uh, the ten MRRBs that we have, the forty-four meters long. Well, they can patrol those areas, but uh, the sustainability of which uh, would be a, a big challenge because maliit ito, then of course, it is obvious that their capacity of fuel and other provisions would be limited as well. Mm -hmm. you know, we really need uh, a, a desired uh, size of ship, and this is the whole thing for the offshore patrol vessel. Kamusta yung presence natin, Admiral, dito sa West Philippine Sea, sa Bajo de Masinlo, and so Benham Rice or Philippine Rice? Uh, given the given yung current capability, uh, how often and how um, how long are our patrol missions to these places currently? Well, when you talk of patrol, so West Philippine Sea. Meron naman tayong actually constant presence uh, pag-asa island as far as Coast Guard is concerned. Okay, if I want to talk about Coast Guard. We have a Coast Guard substation in Pag-asa, which we will be upgrading it to a station. For reason that we want to increase our presence and visibility in that area, in West Philippine Sea. And the very purpose of, of acquiring the OPV is for us to be able to patrol such area, the area, the West Philippine Sea area. And uh, for now, we only have one yet. And that is the very reason why we want to increase the number of offshore patrol vessels for us to be able to increase our presence, our, our frequency in patrolling the area. Mm. Um, so we are going towards the direction, Jesse. Uh, for now, we only have one, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, two more will be coming, and we are getting uh, two more, hopefully, for a repeat order of the mm -hmm. Gabriela Silang type. Mm -hmm. For a total of five offshore patrol vessels, uh, that, that should be enough for us to increase our, our capability of um, well, conducting uh, sustained patrol in West Philippine Sea. Not only West Philippine Sea, but include, of course, Bajor de Masinlok and the northern part of the country, include the Right. Uh, Admiral, si BRP Gabriela Silang, as ano yung priority deployments niya at the moment? Ngayon kasi, because of the COVID-19 challenges that we are facing, we are using Gabriela Sila in transporting LSIs and uh, other uh, transportation requirements of uh, our government in addressing COVID-19, especially to the Visayas and to the So, doon muna naka-focus naka yung Gabriela Sila natin for the moment. But, sa ngayon, naka-quarantine siya. Mm. Naka-quarantine muna siya ngayon, Jesse. Kasi nga, sa mga LSI na tinansport natin, may mga positive doon. 
So, mayroon kami yung mga crew at saka isang officer na naawa, nag-positive. So, we have to quarantine first uh, them, the officers and crew. And, um, hopefully, by next week, um, okay na sila and ready to undertake uh, another uh, mission. Right. Uh, Admiral, ano yung situation natin right now sa West Philippine Sea? Because the Chinese Coast Guard has several vessels plying those waters. And then they have other yung fishing vessels that even Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana said uh, are presumably militia vessels. So in terms of uh, number of vessels spread out over this area, our EEZ in the West Philippine Sea, maraming uh, presence ang Chinese. So sir, if you can describe to us what it's like uh, what it's like for the Philippine Coast Guard to navigate this situation. Uh, ano po yung mga nagagawa ng Philippine Coast Guard to help assert and protect Philippine sovereignty in the West Philippine Sea? I mean, Jesse, ano for the Coast Guard, hindi namin naging problema so far ang Chinese Coast Guard. Um, for reason, because last January, kung maalala mo, pumunta yan sila dito, di ba? And uh, we were able to have such a talk with them. Uh, it was a, a friendly one. Uh, talagang uh, walang, ano, walang, uh, walang uh, girian, or we're not after having, uh, declaring war against them or magkirian. Mm. Hindi yun ang purpose na. We want to address issues at the hand in a peaceful manner to and if possible to dialogue. Right. Uh, so we are into such. And one of which na napag-agreehan namin, we reached an agreement na uh, wag kalawin yung mga fishermen na, natin. Mm-hmm. Which they agreed. Kasi mm-hmm. kami, kami kasi yung underground. Eh. Yes. Uh, Coast Guard natin at saka Coast Guard nila, we are the ones on the ground. So kami yung direkta talaga na involved sa enforcement ng, uh, ng uh, fishery laws no? or fishery standards. So mga pansin mo, wala namang harassment na nangyayari sa mga fishermen natin since we, we had that dialogue with them last January. That's the good news. At um, kami din, when, whenever we navigate there, um, hindi rin nila kami hinaharas. Whenever they see that it's a Coast Guard vessel, Philippine Coast Guard vessel, hindi na sila, hindi na kami hinaharas. Eh, there was an instance na from a distance, eh, lumapit sila at full speed. Siguro hindi pa nila nabasa o hindi pa nila napansin ang Philippine Coast Guard. At nung, nung malapit na sila, siguro nung nabasa na nila ng Philippine Coast Guard, nag-U-turn din sila at lumay. Saan po ito nangyari, na sir? Doon sa, dun, dun sa, ano, sa West Philippine Sea mismo. Hindi sa Bawa di Masino. West Philippine Sea mismo. Hmm. Area po ng Kalayaan Island Group. Oo, oh, Kalayaan. Hmm. Oh. Sa Bawa di Masino naman, sir, kasi, uh, and I've been there as well uh, several years ago, uh, meron silang constant four or five vessels that are inside and around Bawa di Masino. So, for your latest information and if you've done any aerial or seaborne patrols in Bajo de Masinlo, uh, ano po, kamusta po yung sitwasyon doon ngayon, Admiral? Yes, uh, totoo yan, Jesse. Halos uh, may constant presence sila doon. Uh, we do have uh, constant um, uh, tawag dito, uh, monitoring of such area. Uh, kasi meron tayo palaging uh, regular uh, aeroplano natin monitoring of such uh, of the area there about the Masinlok and even the northern part of our country. Um, totoo yun, uh, halos tuloy-tuloy ang presence nila sa uh, about the Masinlok. Hmm. Pero hindi naman nila ginagalaw ng mga fishermen natin. Okay. So, ang Philippine sa- Coast Guard po hinahayaan nila lang lumapit sa about the Masinlok? Well, um, hindi lang tayo nila pinapapasok talaga doon sa, sa shore, uh, sa Scarborough shore. Kasi meron yung parang meron yung ano eh, um, lagoon mm-hmm. na ayaw nila tayo pumasok doon. Dito lang tayo sa Philippines. Okay. Um, and then, Admiral, what is 
another another area naman po no yung Sulusi kasi doon naman ang binabantayan natin is extremists coming in from Malaysia, Indonesia. Doon naman po Admiral, uh, ano naman po yung operations? Uh, ano po yung place ng Coast Guard? And incidentally tatanungin ko na rin po Admiral, ano po yung hatian ninyo with the Philippine Navy pagdating sa pagbabantay sa Sulusi or kahit sa West Philippine Sea? Uh, corollary to that question no, ng pagbabantay nyo ng ating maritime borders? Well, Jesse, dun sa South, um, nagkaroon na tayo ng uh, coordination with the military component there. Kasi so, kung titignan mo nga naman doon ang lowless class, mga lowless groups doon. Um, ano sila eh? Um, Nagko-cross border sila, no? Philippines, dun sa Kapila, si Sabad, and Palit. And, uh, so there's really a need for us to monitor their movement. So we went into establishing a radar system. Doon. Okay? So we now have five radar sites there. And it will, uh, but the uh, objective of which is to increase the number of radars so that we will have a full coverage of the maritime domain there. So that uh, ma monitor talaga natin yung mga watercraft um, transiting in that, in that area. Once we have monitored them, at least, uh, uh, ano natin, no? uh, we can already uh, segregate kung sino yung local at saka suspicious at saka identify talaga na mga illegalista. Mga and not only that, um, we, we came up with a numbering of the watercraft there, no? So the, we now have a system where in all watercraft should have a, a designated number that uh, painted on the watercraft. Those watercraft without any such number given the Coast Guard is deemed or considered as uh, sus suspicious na kaagad. Okay, suspicious mm -hmm. na Hindi lamang yan. Yung mga tao din doon na uh, uh, participating or crossing that area, no? transiting that area, they have to secure such uh, parang hindi naman siya ID talaga, pero it's one way of uh, uh, identifying them uh, more or less they are lawful residents of, of, of that area. So having these uh, systems, no? so this system no? um, integrated into one, um, we can now um, uh, uh, identify those who are really um, uh, lawful uh, people versus you um, uh, no less elements. But Coast Guard cannot do this alone. We have to, to collaborate with uh, other agencies, especially with the military and the PNP, which we are doing it now. So we are starting with such uh, uh, efforts on uh, Jesse. And uh, if, if this will be a successful one, we will replicate this in other areas. You know, para, uh, we, will all, we will be able to monitor and enforce our laws, domestic laws, in areas, especially the areas that are identified to be hot spots. No? So, Yes, uh, we are. We have such an effort to address in, uh, the lowlessness in uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. Kamusta yung so, with ano the ito? Philippine Navy? Just to, kasi, for us to understand. Oh, ang kung sa hatian kasi yan, kasi mandato kasi yan, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Sa amin kasi we have to be there if it is a law enforcement matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, kasi kami ang law enforcement agency. But mm -hmm. if it is a defense-related matter, then that's Navy. Okay, mm -hmm. that's military. Mm -hmm. And since it's in the water, then the Navy has to take cognizance of mm -hmm. such. But if it is a uh, law enforcement-related matter, then Coast Guard has to take cognizance of such because of our mandate. Halimbawa, Ad Thank you, Admiral. Thank you, po. Um, Halimbawa, Admiral, just to, ano, to illustrate. So, watching out for terrorists coming in, mas purview po ba yun ng Navy or ng Coast Guard? Well, ad yung addressing the situation in the South 
it has to be a joint effort, just mm -hmm. to say that. It has to be a joint effort. Because uh, hindi lamang, we, we know uh, these threat groups, no? how, how notorious they are. So it's better that uh, the, uh, the military and the Coast Guard uh, uh, join, join forces uh, in, uh, in uh, neutralizing or, or, or going after them. Better for us to really have a joint uh, effort. All right. And then how about illegal, illegal fishing, poachers? Uh, for, lalo na kung hindi Pilipino, kamusta po yung pagbabantay sa ganong bagay, Admiral? It's better for us to be on the front. Coast Guard to be on the front in addressing such uh, 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 illegal activity, illegal fishing. Because and is that a common, ano, sir? Is that a common problem? Marami po ba kayong nahuhuli na poachers sa ating mga waters? So far, hindi masyado ngayon. Okay? There are ilan. And um, the latest that we had is uh, Vietnamese, Vietnamese National. And um, it's not because my my awa ka din sa kanila Jesse, mm -hmm. ito mga Vietnamese uh, fisher, no? uh, walang wala din talaga, mga mahirap mm -hmm. din talaga. For humanitarian consideration, talaga we just let them let them let go of them. At uh, ang galin na lang yung ano, we just confiscate their fishing for a for nalias and their catch. Right. Let them, uh, Pero pa uwiin sila kung baga admiral. Oh, pauwi in for humanitarian reasons. Subsistence fishermen din naman sila kumbaga. Oo, oh, fishermen wala mm -hmm. naman ginagawang uh, uh, illegal na, you know, but uh, yes, uh, tail filing criminal case against them. Mm -hmm. So, yun lang, nasa territorial waters natin. Minsan mm -hmm. eh, ay kapit pa palim din talaga sila Jesse. So, Understood, uh, Admiral. Mm -hmm. On a, on, a, on a closing note, Admiral, uh, you just assumed leadership of the Coast Guard in June, in the middle of a pandemic. Tapos, uh, just over a month in, uh, there is this crisis with the Liber Liberty Cinco. Um, and yung nga, the, the world is not in its normal state because of the coronavirus. So given everything, Admiral, and all the challenges uh, that a maritime country such as the Philippines is facing right now. What is your vision, Admiral, for the Philippine Coast Guard? Where do you want to navigate it towards during your term as the Commandant? Well, I would say, um, in Coast Guard, kasi, we already have a, a clear vision. We want to be a world-class Coast Guard. Okay. So having said that, we want to maintain that course of attaining or becoming a world class uh, Coast Guard. Despite of the pandemic now, COVID-19, we are still maintaining our um, mandate. Uh, uh, we have three major mandates the month. You know, maritime safety, marine environmental protection, and uh, maritime security and law enforcement. So we are into pursuing our capability development and modernization program. For us to be able to perform these three major functions of ours, and uh, if we are going to revisit our IRR, there are a total of 54 um, functions that we are expected to do. So we have to capacitate uh, uh, the organization and the people's our personnel for us to be effective and efficient in, un in performing these 54 functions in our IRR. So we have to, as far as our personnel are concerned, we have to increase our strength to initially 40,000 strong, hopefully by next year, but uh, we are still 18,500 now, that's it. So it's a long way to go, but we are optimistic that we can attain that. Why 40,000 strong? Because uh, we are into rationalizing that there should be one Coast Guard for every kilometer of our coastline. And we have a total of 37,000 kilometers of coastline 
coastline pa lang yun, Jesse. Hmm. How about our territorial seas? Yes. How about our sea? So, we need more. So, are, we are we are into really increasing our strength to 133,000 coast guard personnel. As big as that of the ARP. Ilan po ba kayo so, ngayon, Admiral? Ilan po ba ang personnel? 18,000. 18,500 pa lang kami, Jesse. Mm -hmm. But when we separated from the Navy, we were only 3,000 strong. Right. 3,000 na ang Coast Guard at the time. So, kailangan talaga we have to increase the number of personnel in Coast Guard. And we have to increase the number of ships. We have to increase the number of aircraft that uh, we, we should have. Because these, these are the platforms that we need when we are into coast guarding and securing our waters. And when we talk to security our waters, it's our territorial waters. And our DC. Okay? And uh, we are into increasing also. We are into specializing recruiting the right people uh, for the right job to come up. So, we specialize that we just don't take anybody in. Uh, we, we choose the right people. We see the right people to be able to do the mission. And then, uh, so, Admiral, mm -hmm. sorry, go yes, ahead, Admiral. Yes. And of course, you know, you know uh, we are into investing also on modern technology. As I mentioned, your radar system, uh, communication system, surveillance system, uh, so that we will have a good uh, monitoring uh, capability of our market. Mm -hmm. How far along, Admiral, or in terms of support from the national government, um, in terms of whatever legislation, kumbaga, budget allocation, or uh, if there are projects in the pipeline, kamusta po kayo sa pag-achieve dito sa goal na ito? Would you say that you are uh, in the bay? Meron na po bang platforms kung saan masimulan nyo ng uh, matupad ang vision na yan? Or is there a need for the government to add more focus to what the Coast Guard needs because yun nga po, gaya po ng sabi ninyo, that project uh, na gaya ng GMTSS uh, was from 1998. Hindi naman po siya na-prioritize all this time. Uh, ngayon po ba, mayroon po bang drive? Is there, uh, is there groundswell, kumbaga, of uh, support from the higher government for the Coast Guard to be able to achieve these objectives, Admiral? We to be honest, Jesse, we are very, very fortunate now under the Duterte administration because we have such uh, full support from his administration in uh, modernizing Coast Guard. That explains why we have new ships, many new ships, and uh, new, new helicopters, for example. Our helicopters, are, we have two brand new helicopters top of the line. So, Airbus, Airbus helicopters, and even our the, the increase of uh, our strength is also fully supported by the administration and by our good secretary, Secretary Tugade. In fact, that is his marching order to me when I assumed uh, Commandant. He said that, uh, Commandant George, I want you to pursue your, the modernization program of the Coast Guard. I want you to pursue the increase of personnel in the Coast Guard. So we have such support from the higher ops on this GSC. There is no problem on that. Thank you, Admiral. Anything else you would like to add before our time is up? Well, uh, Jesse, um, your Coast Guard will always navigate towards becoming a world-class world Coast Guard. A Coast Guard that the Filipino people will be proud of. And um, kita nyo naman, in this time of pandemic, the Coast Guard is anywhere, everywhere. Hindi lamang sa, sa seaports, sa coastlines, sa dagat, where also uh, the airports. You will notice, ang daming Coast Guard dyan. Nasa hotels kami. No, tumutulong kami sa pagbabantay ng mga quarantine uh, facilities of COVID. Nasa daan kami, nagta-traffic din kami. No? Our buses are also involved in transporting LSIs. 
It is because the Coast Guard is a humanitarian agency as well. So since uh, with this pandemic, we, uh, a humanitarian agency has to be uh, involved. Uh, uh, so, you know, Coast Guard, you know, hindi namang sa dagat, but it is anywhere, everywhere. A Coast Guard that the Philippine people will be proud of. And on Coast that note, eventually it will be a world class Coast Guard agency. Thank you, Admiral. On that note, no, um, we wish well. Uh, latest from Commodore Balilo is that some 300 Coast Guard personnel, frontliners, have gotten infected with the coronavirus, but 83 of them have recovered. And uh, fortunately, no one has succumbed to the, sea, to the disease, and we hope it stays yes. that way. But uh, uh, just to thank you also, the, the Coast Guard, for what it is doing to help uh, the country weather this pandemic. And, uh, yes, Jesse, because it's a strong faith in God also, Jesse. Hindi lamang earthly actions, but we also do have such, uh, you know, our faith, our faith in God is very strong. So that explains why we are, we have such statistics, you know. I, I want to believe as far as that. It's because God is with us. And I'm telling them, let us serve with humility and compassion. Kaya nga, kailangan, lalo na itong mga returning ROF natin, uh, returning uh, overseas Filipinos, I should say, we have to, you know, we have to be compassionate to them. We have to, to serve them with uh, humility. Which, uh, napapansin nyo naman siguro, ganun talaga ang ginagawa namin. Kasi, um, alam, malasakit talaga itong ginagawa ng mga tao namin. Hindi na trabaho Maybe. ito, Jesse. Talaga mm -hmm. nagmamalasakit talaga pa. Nagmamalasakit pa. Sino ba naman ang magkutulungan kung di tayo tayo di naman? Tama po, Admiral. So, Tama. Yeah. Let's pray for one another. Sabi ko nga, let's pray for one another. Let's pray for everyone. Wala namang tatalo pa sa power ni Lord. So yun, Jesse. Indeed. Uh, amen. Uh, Vice Admiral George Usabia, uh, maraming salamat po for your time this afternoon. This has been Rappler Talk. Uh, my name is JC Gutinga. Thank you for joining us and keep watching Rappler for more interviews like this one. Thank you. Keep well. Thank you.